Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. We have to find the coordinates on this function f of x equals the square root of 3x minus 1 minus x, where the tangent is horizontal. So this question is going to be pretty tough. A student sent it to me, thought I'd make a video for it. There's going to be a lot of algebra in this question. It's probably one of the tougher slope of tangent questions that you could get in this section. So First thing I want to mention, when a tangent is horizontal, or when any line in general is horizontal, what does that mean? What's their slope? That means the slope of that line or that tangent is going to be zero. So we got to figure out at what coordinate on this function is the slope of the tangent going to be zero. So what we first have to do is we have to find an expression for the slope of the tangent for this particular function. And in general, the slope of the tangent is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Right? That's the general expression. And so if we apply this to this particular function, we would end up having the limit as h approaches 0. Now, f of a plus h, what we would do is we would plug in a plus h for the two x values here. So we'd have, let's put it in square brackets, we'd have the square root of 3 bracket a plus h minus 1 minus a plus h. Right? This entire square bracket here is this f of a plus h. And then we're going to be subtracting f of a, so we would just plug in a for the x value. So we'd have the square root of 3a minus 1 minus a, like that. And then this here is going to be all over h, like that. So we got to simplify all of this. Remember, what's the goal here? We're trying to get rid of this h here in the denominator, because once we can do that, then we could plug in that value of 0 for h and have an expression for the slope of the tangent. Question is, how are we going to do that? Well, what we can do here, first off, let's try to simplify. So I'm going to distribute this negative inside this bracket, and then I'm going to distribute this negative inside this square bracket. So what we would end up with is the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root. Now over here, actually, I'm going to distribute this 3 inside the bracket. So we'll have 3a plus 3h minus 1. Then we'll have minus a minus h, right, after I distribute that negative. Over here, distribute the negative. And then this negative a would turn into a positive a, right? Minus minus is positive. That's going to be all over h. Now, notice here now in the numerator what happens, those a's cancel out. Now, you got to be careful here. You can't just cancel out this h and this h. Like, you can't cross these out because you're not multiplying these terms, right? We have this square root minus h minus that square root, right? Because we're subtracting here, even if we were adding as well can cancel out the h's. In order to cancel out the h's, stuff has to be multiplying. In order to cancel out factors in a numerator and denominator, things have to be multiplying. So unfortunately, we can't do that yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to sort of rearrange this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the limit as h approaches 0. In the numerator, I'm going to put the two square root terms together. So I'll have the square root of 3a plus 3h minus 1 minus the square root of 3a minus 1. So this and this I put together, and then the minus h I'm going to put on the end. And that's still going to be all over h. And then from here, what you want to do, here's where the, uh, the tricky part is, I feel like, for this question, is you want to split this up into two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as h approaches 0. These two terms I'll put over h, so I'll have the square root of 3a plus 3h minus 1 minus the square root of 3a minus 1. That will be over h. And then this minus h I'll put over h as well. Right. So I took this one fraction here and split it up into two separate fractions.
The reason why you want to do that is because now notice how this and this cancel out. So we're just left with a one there. So what we would end up having is the limit as h approaches zero of the square root of 3a plus 3h minus one minus the square root of 3a minus one. This will be over h. And then we have this minus one on the outside. So we still can't plug in zero for h yet because we still have this h in this denominator, but it's already looking a lot better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this minus one on the side here, and then I'm just gonna work with this. So let's pretend that we just had to solve this over here. What do we do? Well, we rationalize it, right? We're trying to get rid of this h in the denominator. It's just we can't forget about that minus one. So this minus one I'll actually put further out. So when we rationalize this, we'll have 3a plus 3h minus one plus root 3a minus one, right? Same terms, it's just the sign in the middle is changing over square root of 3a plus 3h minus one plus the square root of 3a minus one, like that. Right, so I'm just taking this expression and just multiplying it by one which is keeping everything the same, we're just adding more onto it. And the reason why we wanna do that, we've shown this in previous examples, is, um, is to get rid of this h over here. Because what's gonna happen is, notice when we multiply this out, this times that, we only multiply the n's, and then we're gonna be subtracting three a, uh, the square root of three a minus one times the square root of three a minus one is just three a minus one. And we're subtracting that whole term there. That's gonna be all over h. Keep this and this separate. So we would have the square root of 3a plus 3h minus one plus the square root of 3a minus one, like that. And then we still have that minus one on the end, right? So we took, it's kind of like what we did. Um, we took this function this f of x, and we split it up into two functions, right? This function here, and then this function over here. And then basically what we can do to find the general equation for the slope, we could find the general equation of the slope for this function, which is kind of what we're doing over here, and then the general slope for this function x, which is just one. And then we can combine them together right, because we're subtracting. If these are multiplying, then we can't do those two separately, but if you're adding a bunch of functions or subtracting functions, you could find out the slopes of the tangents of each of the functions separately. So that's kind of what we're doing over here. So this function is obviously gonna take a lot more work than this one. The slope of the tangent of this is just one, right? The slope of the tangent of x, which is just a line, is just the slope of that line. But the slope of the tangent for this is always gonna be changing, so there's gonna be an actual expression. So from here, notice that if we distribute the negative, we'll have 3a minus 3a, those cancel out. Then we'll have negative one plus one, right? Minus minus is plus, those would cancel out. And so we'd just be left with 3h at the top, and then that h and this h cancel out. So we, what we would end up having is the limit as h approaches zero, of three, right, we still have that three at the top, over this square bracket. Square root of 3a plus 3h minus one plus the square root of 3a minus one, and then we have that minus one over here. And now we got rid of this h over here, we can now plug in uh, zero for, um, for h. So what's gonna happen myself some more room here is when we plug in zero for h this value over here is going to go to zero three times zero and that's the only h that's around so what we would end up having the slope is going to be three over the square root of 3a minus one plus the square root of 3a minus one and then we got the minus one on the outside and then notice these two are like terms, so there's like a one, one in front there. So basically this would end up being three over two root three a minus one. And then we got the minus one there. So this here is 
the uh, general formula for the slope of the tangent for this function over here. So any x value you, you want on this function, you plug in here for this a value, that's going to give you the slope of the tangent at that specific x value. So this part over here is the slope of the tangent for this function minus the slope of the, tan uh, slope of the tangent for x is just always 1. But we're not done. We're trying to find out where is the tangent horizontal. So we got to find out when is this going to equal 0. Right, that's what the original question is. So we got to solve for a here. So we bring the negative 1 over, so it would be positive 1. Then we'd have 3 over 2 root 3a minus 1. This 1 is going to be over 1. So now we could cross multiply. So we would end up having 2 root 3a minus 1 uh, equals 3. Right, this times that, this times that when we cross multiply. Then from here, what we can do is um, we can divide both sides by 2. And then from here, we could square both sides, right, to get rid of the square root. So we'd have 3a minus 1 equals 9 over 4. Bring the negative 1 over, so we'll have 3a equals 9 over 4 plus 1, which is like plus 4 over 4, which would be uh, 13 over 4. Divide both sides by 3. So we're dividing by 3 over 1 here, which is like multiplying by 1 over 3. These threes cancel out, so we would end up getting 13 over 12. So at that a value, 13 over 12, or at that x value, the slope of the tangent on this function is going to be horizontal. Right? Their slope of the tangent is going to be 0. So what they want in this question is the full coordinates, so that's just going to be the x value. So we got 13 over 12, right, at that x value on this function, slope of the tangent is 0. So to get the corresponding y value, all we have to do is plug in 13 over 12 into the function. So what we would do then is uh, find what f of 13 over 12 is going to be, so we'd have the square root of 3 times 13 over 12 minus 1 minus 13 over 12. Let me just make sure that that's all good. Yeah, it looks fine to me. So if we uh, simplify this, um, 3 over 12, that's just 1 over 4, so we would end up having the square root of 13 over 4, right? Yeah, minus 1, minus 13 over 12. This minus uh, 1, we could change to 4 over 4. So we'd have the square root of 9 over 4, minus 13 over 12, like that. Square root of 9 over 4, we would take the square root of 9 and the square root of 4, square root of the numerator and the denominator, that would end up being 3 over 2, minus 13 over 12, like that. And then this would end up being uh, 18 over 12, minus 13 over 12, which would give us 5 over 12, like that. Right? So that is the corresponding y value. So we would have 5 over 12, like that. So that is the coordinate. That's the full coordinate right there. Right? So a lot of tricks in this question, as I mentioned. It was tricky finding this general expression for the slope of the tangent. Then there was a, a bit of algebra to find out this x value of where the slope of the tangent is going to be 0, right? We found out when does this expression equal 0. And then once we got that x value, we had to plug it into the function to get the corresponding y value. And then we have the full coordinate where that tangent is horizontal.